Casey Martin from Wine Country Woodworks and we're going to be making some really cool resin and burl cheese boards or charcuterie boards, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they could technically be used as a cutting board as well, although I wouldn't recommend it because of the resin. Um, so here's an example of one that I've already got finished up. I'll show you guys a close up in a second. But uh, we're going to be using this mold. It's 10 inches long by 8 inches wide. And I already have a few that are already finished as well. They just need to be drum sanded or planed. And we're gonna make a couple in this video as well. And I'll walk you guys through the process that I use to do so. Um, a big thank you to Total Boat for sending out the epoxy that we're going to be using for this project. Uh, this current mold, for those of you who follow my channel and know that I'm usually pressure casting with Alumilite resin, it won't fit in my pressure pot and we could obviously make it smaller. The main problem is the diagonal here because I can fit 10 inches in is that uh, we might as well not worry about that because even if we were to use Alumilite we would have to either stabilize or really really dry the wood and with the epoxy it doesn't react as much to the moisture so what we're going to do is just heat up the wood a really good amount but we don't have to worry about it getting to zero percent moisture so enough talking and let's get right into the project all right guys so the wood we're using in this um, mold right now is maple burl and and box elder burl uh, the two largest pieces are the box elder burl and the smaller pieces are maple burl the two species of woods are actually cousins and they're very very similar and so they're going to look slightly different. Even these two pieces of maple burl are going to look slightly different. Um, the two pieces of box elder burl are from the same exact cut, just sliced down the middle. But it's all going to look so similar that most people won't be able to tell their different woods. So we're going to be using some white pearl, some caster's choice white pearl. And this is the epoxy we're using, the, the total boat tabletop epoxy. Now one thing I wanted to mention about this is that according to them you are really only supposed to be pouring a quarter inch of thickness at a time and I can tell you at least from my experience in California with the temperatures ranging from 60 to 72 or so during the whole time of me pouring these you can pour even more than a half an inch at a time. I've poured three quarters with no problems and you know just a little surface bubbles as normal with epoxy. So we're going to pour about a half an inch to um, maybe three quarters just so we can cover everything on this and we're going to do that right now. So this type of resin is by volume so they were kind enough to also send out some cups with volume measurements on them so we are going to do that right now. So at this point, I'm just pouring out the individual parts of resin. It's a one by one ratio, which makes it pretty easy on this. I believe on this pour, I end up starting with about 18 ounces, and then I end up needing about one to two more ounces at the ends to completely cover all of the wood. Uh, this resin is super thick, so you definitely get kind of a hand workout. I wasn't worrying too much about incorporating a lot of bubbles into this board because I was adding some white pearl uh, caster's choice powder. I also wasn't too concerned about pouring the resin from a really high vantage point, uh, which I do on one of the boards that's completely crystal clear because that helps incorporate less bubbles. But on this one, I didn't care about it too much. Uh, th like I said, I ended up adding a couple more ounces of resin after this original pour. The reason for that is I think if you have the ability to, it's very important to completely submerge all of the wood. This allows for any voids to be filled however small and also allows the wood to be sealed a little bit as well if it's not stabilized which this wood and none of the woods besides one small piece uh, were all unstabilized so here's me adding on the little bit of layer So here's how it came out. It actually floated a little bit on me because I used some mold release and not enough hot glue. So I ended up clamping down some pieces of HDPE. This is the next board that I was doing and uh, I had the idea to use some of this uh, sea glass 
pebbles that I bought online. The link to these will be in the video description. I actually got a bunch of different colors of them, but I thought the sea glass would look the coolest because it's also transparent. This wood is some oak burl that I got from my friend Joey Berg. Him and I are actually uh, making these somewhat together. He helped me on quite a few of them. You'll see later on in the video. And uh, we're going to be selling these at a craft show. So right now, so that I don't have to deal with any bubbles around the wood, I'm sealing the live edge with just five minute epoxy and a brush. Uh, this allows me to not worry about any bubbles from moisture. I did, or I should say, to minimize as much as possible bubbles from moisture. I did heat up this wood for 20 to 30 minutes in my toaster oven, uh, like I do even with stabilized wood, but the epoxy isn't as sensitive to moisture anyway. But I didn't want to take any chances because this was going to be a crystal clear one. I do want to mention one of the things I was kind of too excited on this project to really think it through, but what I should have done before adding in all of the sea glass pebbles is I should have poured a really thin coat of just clear epoxy, you know, like a, a quarter inch or, or an eighth or something like that and just made and cut the wood thicker. What this would have allowed for is to have the pebbles completely, um, in the middle of the the resin have them kind of floating so to speak and also i wouldn't have had to sand the actual stone that you'll see me do later which was uh, pretty harsh on my drum sander sandpaper it, it doled it and I'll, I'll talk more about that later it ends up looking fine but it would have been a heck of a lot easier and it probably would have looked a little better on both sides this top side that you guys can see right now looks great and the exposed stone ends up looking pretty cool too but if i was to do this over again which i probably will down the road i'm definitely going to do that and i i definitely wanted to mention that to you guys as well because i think it's the correct way to do it and it also makes you know all of the the actual practical uh, reasons a lot easier as well So here is the wood when it came out of the mold. Uh, the wood looks uh, pretty great. What was actually nice about that wood and this wood, uh, which was completely different, uh, it's chestnut, the wood on the stone board uh, was really dense. So even though it wasn't stabilized, it, it worked really well uh, for finishing. I'll talk more about that later. So this is some chestnut that Joey uh, gave uh, to us to use for the, the projects. And he's actually on the right side of the screen right now mixing up the, the resin. One of the other boards that we made that's probably one of the coolest, it has uh, the Avzelia burl. We'll show you that later on the video, but we actually didn't film pouring that one but Joey helped me with that one as well and since uh, quite a bit of these boards had his wood in it I definitely wanted to include him as much as possible and so right now we are using black pearl caster's choice powder which I love I'm a huge fan of it because black resin looks really really good with certain woods especially a wood like this that's spalted has wormholes that are black and What's great about the Caster Choice powder is it's it's a pearl still. So even though it's black, which can be kind of boring, this one isn't because it has some pearl. So here's an insanely sped up clip of me drum sanding uh, all of the different boards uh, that I ran through it, which were really uh, two that I show on here, mainly the stone board and then also uh, one of the uh, wood boards. The thick one that Joey and I cast not on camera, and then the other black one we ran through the planer, which was a lot easier and a lot faster, and actually left a smoother surface than the drum sander did because since I did the stone one first, it dulled the sandpaper, and it also caused the sandpaper to dull right in the middle where the stone was. So what I did next on all of them was hit them with um, my belt sander to get rid of any lines left from the planer or the drum sander. The planer didn't really leave any lines, just the drum sander. I should have done all of them through the planer besides the stone one. And I wouldn't have uh, even had a problem sanding the stone one and could have put it through the planer if I did the method that I was mentioning earlier. So you just saw me uh, sand up to about 
220 grit on all of the boards and then after that it's now time to apply a wipe on poly so i used the same wipe on poly on all of the boards besides one of them i couldn't get to work super well it's actually the far left in this shot i couldn't get it to really just get a get a good application i all of the these three boards all of the wood in them uh besides one piece on the far left board were unstabilized and they just kept soaking up the poly over and over. I probably put 10 coats on them. And the one on the left, I had to put so many coats that I ended up just sanding it all down and using a spray polyurethane. But I'm still really happy with all of the results. And you guys may be wondering, why am I using a polyurethane if I have tabletop epoxy, which is meant to be a finish? The reason has to do with food safety. Most tables have plates on them, so it doesn't need to necessarily be food safe for food to lay on it. Polyurethane, when it's completely cured and everything, which these will be by the time they're sold, is food safe for food to lay on. So that's why I went with those. I also ran out of the epoxy anyway, so I couldn't have even if I wanted to. And I also didn't want to worry about uh, it spilling over the sides and then having to clean that up if it wasn't going to look that well and so the wipe on poly was just a really easy way to do it and here's me applying the spray poly onto the other ones if I had to redo it I probably would have sprayed them all but the other ones looked so great that I didn't really want to mess with it all right everyone so the cheese boards are done this one uh, came out pretty good this wood would not stop soaking up finish I really should have taken the time to stabilize, honestly, all of this wood. It would have made the finishing so much easier. You can see when the light hits that top left um, and the bottom left, it still doesn't have as much finish, but it's, it's pretty thickly coated on there at this point, so I'm really not messing with that one anymore. It should be plenty fine. This one is the only one that I did more of a satin finish. It, I used the same wipe on poly, but I didn't do um, tons and tons of coats um, because it's it's still fine and the, the wood is popping. So I'm not super worried about it because I, I think it looks really, really nice that way. Uh, my favorite probably, and it has a lot to do with the wood, is this guy. And it's, it's the other side that I'm actually in love with. That wood just looks beautiful to me. It's that... It's Apzelia Burl I, that I got from Joey Berg from Custom Woodwork. He's the one who you guys probably saw in a couple of the, the videos um, that I, I, or video shots, I should say, that I mentioned earlier. So uh, check him out if you want to get some, some nice wood. But I'm really happy with how this one came out. The only defects are the slight bubbles, but it is what it is. I mean, people buying this at a craft show as a cheese board or charcuterie board or even a display piece, they're not gonna know they're not supposed to be there. And, and they really don't take anything away from the structural integrity with it being used as a cheese board. This is probably, it's not, I don't know if it's tied. It, it, it's either tied for my favorite or my second favorite. I just love the wood on that one. This one came out really, really well in terms of the finish. It's, it's completely see-through. Uh, the, the stone looks really great. The thing that I would change differently, I probably mentioned it earlier, about how I would pour a thin layer of clear epoxy before putting the stones in. I don't know why I, I didn't do that the first time. Because the only defect with this board is that because I was sanding the stone on my drum sander, the middle of it... Um, the middle of the sandpaper got dull and so it's ever so slightly curved that way because the sides where the sandpaper was fine got sanded down more and so when that happened it it obviously curved the whole board and then when i flipped it over it, it still did the same thing on this side because it, it was already not flat so there's a little bit of a wobble to it if you're on this side since the curve curves up on this side there's no wobble which is fine, um, even though this is the exposed stone side, which I think looks great. It looks great, but this is my favorite side, so I'm kind of bummed that's the way the 
the the curve makes it but it's it's fine as a cheese board i mean it's it's totally fine there's only a little bit and then this guy is the one that i did the spray finish on and it turned out really well this one i ended up getting way too thin on the planer trying to get out a warp a very slight warp it doesn't even wobble um so i mean it, it might have looked right there but that's actually the the towel causing that um but it's it's fine as a cheese board it, i mean it doesn't need to be super thick uh this small piece of maple down here was the only piece in all of these boards that were stabilized and i wish i just stabilized it all because it was so easy to finish that section and anyway i really like how this one came out with the, the transparency you can really see that maple well and uh yeah let me know what you guys think all right, everyone. Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the kind of on-the-go narration I tried with this. It wasn't completely like a vlog, obviously, because I still had some voiceover, but let me know what you guys think about that. If you liked it or didn't like it, let me know, because I definitely want to do whatever everyone likes for future project videos. I thought this was a really fun project because it's something that's really easy to do for anybody really. I have a link in the video description for the HDPE that I used for the mold. Uh, you could use melamine, but I'd recommend just using HDPE. It's pretty cheap. Get it on Amazon with Prime. Um, and the total boat actually isn't even that, the, the kind that I use isn't even that expensive. You can get the big size that I use for like 50 bucks and it made all of these. So, um, the wood obviously is something that you would have to source yourself, but getting uh, live edge pieces isn't that hard. Uh, you can look online, that's what I do. Um, I was fortunate enough that Joey had a lot um, that we were able to use as well. But I really, uh, I, I mentioned earlier how much uh, I learned on the stone cutting board, or cheese board I should say. Um, so I'm excited to, to try to do that. Uh, I, that method again, but do it correctly. Um, I got these easels because these are going to be sold at a craft show and I, I bought this like six pack of easels for canvases for painting and uh, they work great for displaying them. So uh, a great craft show project, great Mother's Day, Father's Day, you know, any, any gift. Um, so let me know what you guys think. I really enjoyed making them. Uh, hopefully these all sell at the craft show. I, I have a pretty good uh, you know, I'm out of hope that they will, but if they don't, then um, I'll also put them up on my site uh, for sale if anyone's interested. Um, but mainly it was to uh, just have the fun of making them and showing you guys how I made them. So the next videos that I have planned to make are multi-die stabilization, how I double die or multi-die uh, burl, uh, and then also making molds out of HDPE. So if you guys want to see one or the other first, definitely let me know down in the comment section which you would like to see, because those are gonna be a ton of fun to make for you guys. I've been getting a lot of requests, so I'm excited to make them. So like the video if you liked it. Uh, definitely leave some comments down below on what you guys thought about the video and also the style. As I mentioned earlier, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. My email is always in the video description. Oh, one other last note I wanted to, to mention, which is pretty exciting. Uh, it's pretty big news for me and my life, and uh, obviously affects the shops and the videos, is that I got into Cal Poly's MBA program, the school that I was uh, just attending and just graduated from. So the shop is gonna stay where it is for uh, about another year, because I'll be starting in, in the fall, or year and a half roughly. Uh, so that's very exciting. I want to share that with you guys because it affects the channel, and uh, I, I'm really happy about that. So um, that should be should be fun, and I'm really looking forward to that. I just want to mention it. And uh, enough rambling on my part. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy.